the next thing that I want to do is add in a heads up display just to show a little bit of information about the game. To do that, I will start a new scene and inside of it, a new node, which is going to be a canvas layer node. I'll rename this node to HUD for heads up display. And then I'll switch over to the 2D view to start building it up. I want this heads up display to be a little panel at the bottom of our game window to show all the information on. So the first thing I need to do is create that panel. I will add a child node, which is going to be a panel node. And then I can start customizing this. I'll go into my layout and transform and change the size to be 768 wide and 48 pixels tall. Then I will adjust the way it looks. So we'll go into theme overrides, styles, and then create a new style box flat in here. This will just allow me to change the color. I'm not going to bother, I'll just leave it as it is, but if you wanted to, you can click here and select a different color from this color wheel. This panel will actually be appearing at the bottom of our game window. So what I'd like to do is add a border along the top, which will give us a little bit of separation. So the top border is going to be two pixels. And then the border color, I'm just going to change to a fully black border. And before going too far, let's just see how this looks. I will save this one and then go back into the main scene and instantiate it as a child node inside here. So if I bring over the heads up display, it will appear right in the end. Automatically, it will show up up here at coordinate zero, zero, but I actually want to move it down. So if we go into transform and then set the offset on the Y coordinate to seven, six, eight, it's going to move it all the way to the bottom of our game window. If I run this now, it doesn't quite work because the canvas layer is attached onto our camera, whereas our game window is a little bit zoomed out. So I'll need to delete this camera for now. This camera 2D object, it was only temporary anyway, so we can just delete this node, I'll run it again, and now everything fits our game window nicely. And we've got this heads up display down here with this black line that creates a bit of a partition between the two. So now we can start to fill that out a little bit. The first thing I'll do is add a little heart image over here to show how many lives the player still has. And this is going to be a Sprite 2D node. For the texture, I'm going to go into items and then drag over this heart image over here. It's a little bit small, so let's go into the scale and change it from one to three. And then I'm going to reposition it at 37 and 24. So that kind of fits over on the left hand side and more or less in the middle vertically. I then need to add some text on top of that to show how many lives we actually have. And that's going to be done with a label node. Inside here, I'm just going to, for now, just type in times three, which will just be a placeholder. I'll change the alignment vertically and horizontally to center, and then come down into my theme overrides, font sizes, and make it 30 pixels big. Now I just need to shift it over a little bit, so we can do it just by dragging it around, but I've already worked out the position that I would like from before. So I'll say 66 for the X coordinate, and one for the Y coordinate, just to move it down a little bit. So now it's given us that we've got three lives. I will need to access this label later on though, so it's important to change the name of it to something identifiable. So this will be my lives label. Then I will create another label in the middle. I'll rename that to wave label, and this will tell us what wave we're currently on. And the process is the same as before. I will change the text here to say wave one. All this text will be changed inside the code, but we just put in something for now, just so we can position it and make it look correct. Then just the same as the other text, we'll go down here, change the font size to 30. And then for the position, I can use these anchor presets here. So if I use anchor preset center top, it moves it into the middle. I might just offset it very slightly down. So I'll increase the Y coordinate to one. And all that leaves now is the right hand side. I'm going to have another sprite here. So this will be a sprite 2D. And this time I want to show how many enemies are remaining. So I'm just going to grab the first goblin idle animation and use that as my image. I'll make sure to size it up. So we'll change the scale from one to four. And then for the position, I set it as six, four, seven and 14 when I developed this game previously. Now, just the same as what I've got on the left here for my lives label, I need to create another label for the number of enemies. And I could just duplicate this one. So if I go down here, duplicate this label and just drag it all the way to the bottom, 
rename it to say enemies label. And then I change the text to say times 10 instead of times 3 and adjust the position of that text. So we go into layout, transform, and the X position is going to be 680 pixels. So that puts it nicely to the right of this goblin image. And that's the heads up display pretty much done. So I'll save this, go back into my main scene and run the game again. And we can see it coming up at the bottom. The problem is that none of these numbers are actually changing. We've manually typed them in. So what we want is for them to be changed depending on what variables we have for these numbers. And we can control that through our script. So inside of our main script, we can start defining variables that we will then use to display on that heads up display. And we'll do that now. We'll start off with wave, and this is going to be an integer. Then we've got max enemies, so we'll keep that as it is. And then we'll have another one, which is going to be lives, and we'll set that to an integer as well. And then inside of our ready function, we can assign values to these variables. So our wave can be wave one, and lives can be set to three. And now we can use these numbers to change the text inside of those labels. We can drag over the heads up display node here, and then forward slash, and then we can choose the node that we want. So for the lives, we need the lives label, for example. So we just type lives label dot text, which is the property that we want to change. And then we can change the lives to say x, leave a space, and then a string value of our lives variable. So let's just change the lives variable to 30 and run this again. Now our lives automatically updates. So even though when we created the heads up display scene, we define that variable as, or we define the text as three, our script can override this property. So let's change the rest of them as well. I'll copy this down a couple of times. The second one is going to be the number of waves. So it'll be wave label and the text changes slightly. So it says wave with a colon, then a space, and then it will be the string value of the wave variable. And then the last one is going to be enemies label. Here, we'll just leave the first part as it is, and then we change the string to max enemies. So let's just put different numbers in all of these just to test this out, run it again, and here we are. So we've got 30 lives, wave 18, and 109 max enemies. So this is working correctly. We'll set this all back to how it should be. Wave one, three lives, and 10 enemies. And we can also update these variables in this text whenever something happens in the game. For example, we have this function on enemy spawner hit player, which happens when one of the goblins hits the player. So at this point, the player should die and we should lose a life. So instead of this pass that we had here before, we can say that lives is reduced by one. But after that happens, we also want to copy this line from up here to change the text inside of that lives label to update it with a new lives variable. If we try this out, we start off with three lives and I let one of the enemies hit me, my lives drop down. And that's all that I want to do for the heads up display at the moment. So we'll keep this one short and I will see you in the next video.